We humans are fascinated with the idea of traveling back or ahead in time. Time travel machines and devices have been a staple for a lot of science fiction and even fantasy stories catering to our desire to either change something in the past or make our lives better, or just skip ahead in time to find out if life gets better on its own in the future. But despite all of our technical and scientific advantages, we are nowhere close to time travel or manipulation. We will probably never get to see for ourselves how mighty dinosaurs roam the Earth, what living in ancient Egypt was like, or what new organisms may evolve in the future when humans are gone from the face of our dear planet. Ever wonder why we may never develop a time machine? Because time probably doesn't even exist. Welcome to Fact Nomino. And today, let's find out why some physicists think time exists just in our heads. I apologize, but we have to start this video in the most clinched wedding toast fashion. Oxford Dictionary defines time as the indefinite continued progress of existence and events in the past, present, and future, regarded as a whole. But is that all that time is? Absolutely not, at least according to our physicists. One of the most brilliant minds of our time, Albert Einstein, proposed that time is the fourth dimension. But one can argue that Einstein also theorized that everything in the universe is relative, so time can also be irrelevant. In the best-selling book, The Secret, the authors write, time is just an illusion. But time and time again, pun intended, physicists have proved that time is a measurable, observable phenomenon. But then again, we also do not know what makes time exist and be measurable. So time is just our collective imagination. This question borders the realm of metaphysics and ontology as much as it does on the strictly empirical questions about time that physics is well equipped to address. However, there's no other way to say it. Physics as we know it is in crisis. Everything we know about the universe could be wrong or misconceived. For nearly a century, physicists have explained the universe with two wildly successful theories, general relativity and quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics describes how things work in the incredibly tiny world of particles and particle interactions. General relativity describes the big picture of gravity and how objects move. The problem is that both theories, even though they work exceptionally well in their own right, are in direct conflict with each other. That's crazy, right? The two theories that we use as the basis of explaining everything about the universe don't see each other eye to eye, and that means we could be wrong somewhere. However, it is also true that the nature of this conflict between quantum mechanics and the theory of relativity is a bit controversial. Despite that, the general consensus among the scientific fraternity is that we need to replace both theories with something new and more universal. Basically, a theory that can explain both quantum mechanics and gravity at the same time without pitting the two ideas against each other. In essence, such a theory would explain how gravity's big picture works at the miniature scale of particles. But that isn't easy, in fact. Producing a theory of quantum gravity is extraordinarily difficult. Now you may ask, hey, what about string theory? Well, that is a valid argument. But string theory has its own set of difficulties. The problem with string theory is that it has various models of the universe, but not a lot to say that can be tested by experiments to figure out which model is the right one. So in simple words, string theory just poses more questions than providing any proper answer. And now if you are thinking, okay, wait a minute, what does that all have to do with time? Well, everything. When string theory failed to provide the answers, scientists began searching for answers elsewhere during the 80s and 90s and came up with a range of new mathematical approaches to quantum gravity. The most prominent of these new equations was the loop quantum gravity. See, it got both quantum and gravity covered. But there was another remarkable aspect of the loop quantum gravity. It appears to eliminate time entirely. The loop quantum gravity, or LQG, proposed that the fabric of space and time is made of a network of extremely small discrete chunks, or loops. In the Principia, Newton distinguished two notions of time. The first, which he called the common one, is the one in the previous item. The second, which he called the true one, is what has been later called Newtonian time. 
Newtonian time is assumed to be flowing uniformly even when nothing happens with no influence from events, and to have a metric structure. In LQG, Newtonian time appears only as an approximation. It has no role at all in the foundation of the theory. Loop quantum gravity is not alone in abolishing time. A number of other approaches also seem to remove time as a fundamental aspect of reality. In 1927, Sir Arthur Eddington coined the phrase the arrow of time in his book The Nature of the Physical World. What he meant by the term was the idea that time flows in only one direction like a river, but dimensions of space have no preferred directions or orientations. He also defined the arrow of time by pointing out three characteristics. Time is vividly recognized by consciousness. It is also equally insisted on by our reasoning faculty, determining that a reversal of the arrow of time would be nonsensical. And lastly, time makes no appearance in physical science except in the study of the organization of a number of individuals. Here, the arrow indicates the direction of progressive increase of the random element. The last point here is what we can relate to the physicality of time or time's arrow. The distinguishing factor of the arrow of time is that it points in the direction of increasing entropy, as explained in the second law of thermodynamics. Things in our universe decay as a course of natural time-based processes, but they do not spontaneously regain order without a lot of work. The part where Eddington mentions that time makes no appearance in physical science except in the study of the organization of a number of individuals is quite specific given time occurs all over the place in physics. Time and entropy go hand in hand in a very distant past. The universe had a high degree of order, which means the entropy was lowest, and due to natural laws, entropy is continuously increasing. Or, in simple terms, one can say the arrow of time is entropy. Apart from mentioning that time is just an illusion, the authors of The Secret also mention that there is no time in the universe and there is no size for the universe. And what quantum physicists and Einstein tell us is that everything is happening simultaneously. According to most scientists, these statements are categorically false. Time is actually an integral part of the universe. The very linear concept of time is tied into the concept of the second law of thermodynamics, which is seen by many physicists as one of the most important laws in all of physics. Without time as a real property of the universe, the second law becomes meaningless. Through his theory of relativity, Einstein proved that time by itself was not an absolute quantity. Rather, time and space are united in a very precise way to form space-time. And this space-time is an absolute measure that can be used again in a very precise mathematical way to determine how different physical processes in different locations interact with each other. Einstein firmly believed that past, present, and future do not happen simultaneously as would be the case in absence of time. In fact, based on the evidence of his equation E equals mc squared, Einstein knew that no information can travel faster than the speed of light. If there was no time, anything could have been as fast as the speed of light, which isn't the case. Every point in space-time is limited in the way it can communicate with other regions of space-time. The idea that everything happens simultaneously exactly counters the results that Einstein developed. Lise Mullen's 2013 book, Time Reborn, From the Crisis in Physics to the Future of the Universe, argues that often science does treat time as an illusion. That is, we need a theory that incorporates quantum mechanics or quantum physics along with space, time, and gravity, and that's sometimes called the task of quantum gravity. Einstein himself wrote to his friend Michel Bessos' family on his passing, now he has departed the strange world a little ahead of me, it signifies nothing. For us believing physicists, the distinction between past, present, and future is only a stubbornly persistent illusion. Many physicists argue that Einstein's statement was not merely an attempt at consolation. Einstein's position is implied by the two pillars of modern physics. Einstein's masterpiece, The General Theory of Relativity, and the Standard Model of Particle Physics. The laws that underlie these theories are time-symmetric. 
That is, the physics they describe is the same regardless of whether the variable called time increases or decreases. These physicists have made peace with the idea of a block universe, arguing that the task of the physicist is to describe how the universe appears from the point of view of individual observers. Block universe is an idea of a static block of space-time, in which any flow of time or passage through it must presumably be a mental construct or other illusion. But other physicists vehemently disagree, arguing that the task of physics is to explain not just how time appears to pass, but why. For them, the universe is not static, the passage of time is physical. Lee Smullen, for example, wrote that we should treat time as a fundamentally real quantity. And if we take it seriously as such, we will uncover laws of physics that evolve over time. It remains to be seen if this appeal will actually result in new insights into the foundations of physics. Tell us in the comments, do you think time is real or not, and why? And as always, thanks for watching Factnomical.